Welcome to Aurora Reading. Today, we'll be reading The Ranger's Apprentice, Book 1, The Ruins of Gorlin, by John Flanagan. If you liked today's reading, please leave a like and comment, and subscribe to hear more. Today, we'll be reading the prologue. Morgorath, Lord of the Mountains of Rain and Night, former Baron of Gorlin, in the Kingdom of Aurelian, looked out over his bleak, rain-swept domain, and for perhaps the thousandth time, cursed. This was all that was left to him now, a jumble of ragged granite cliffs, tumbled boulders, and icy mountains, of sheer gorges and steep, narrow passages, of gravel and rocks, with ne'er a tree or sign of green to break the monotony. Even though it had been fifteen years since he had been driven back into this forbidding realm that had become his prison, he could still remember the pleasant green glades and thickly forested hills of his former fife, the streams filled with fish and fields rich with crops and game. Gorlin had been a beautiful living place. The mountains of rain and night were dead and desolate. A platoon of wargles were drilling in the castle yard below him. Morgorath watched them for a few seconds, listening to the guttural rhythmic chant that accompanied all their movements. They were stocky, misshapen beings, with features that were halfway human, but with a long, brutish muzzle, and fangs like a bear or a large dog. Avoiding all contact with humans, the Wurgles had lived and bred in these remote mountains since ancient times. No one in living memory had ever set eyes upon one, but rumors and legends had persisted of a savage tribe of semi-intelligent beasts in the mountains. Mogorath, planning a revolt against the kingdom of Arulian, had left Gorlin Fife to seek them out. If such creatures existed, they would give him an edge in the war that was to come. It took him months, but he eventually found them. Aside from their wordless chant, Wurgles had no spoken language, relying on a primitive form of thought awareness for communication. But their minds were simple and their intellects basic. As a result, they had been totally susceptible to domination by a superior intelligence and willpower. Morgorath bent them to his will, and they became the perfect army for him, ugly beyond nightmares, utterly pitiless, and bound totally to his mental orders. Now, looking at them, he remembered the brightly dressed knights in glittering armor who used to compete in tourneys at Castle Gorland their silk-gowned ladies cheering them on and applauding their skill, mentally comparing them to these black-furred, misshapen creatures, he cursed again. The Wogles, attuned to his thoughts, sensed his disturbance and stirred uncomfortably, pausing in the middle of what they were doing. Angrily, he directed them back to their drill, and the chanting resumed. Morgorath moved away from the unglazed window, closer to the fire, that seemed utterly incapable of dispelling the damp and chill from the gloomy castle. Fifteen years, he thought to himself again. Fifteen years since he had rebelled against the newly crowned King Duncan, a youth in his twenties. He had planned it all carefully, as the old king's sickness progressed, banking on the indecision and confusion that would follow, his death to split the other barons and give Morgorath his opportunity to seize the throne. Secretly, he had trained his army of wargles, massing them up here in the mountains, ready for the moment to strike. Then, in the days of confusion and grief following the king's death, when the barons traveled to Castle Arulian for the funeral rites, leaving their armies leaderless, he had attacked. Overrunning the southeastern quarter of the kingdom in a matter of days, routing the confused and leaderless forces that tried to oppose him. Duncan, young and inexperienced, could never have stood against him. The kingdom was his for the taking, the throne was his for the asking. Then, Lord Northholt, the old king's supreme army commander, had rallied some of the younger barons into a loyal confederation giving strength to Duncan's resolve and stiffening the wavering courage of the others. The armies had met at Hawkham Hearth, close to the Sipsunda River, and the battle swayed in the balance for five hours, with attack and counterattack, massive loss of life. 
The Slip and Sunder was a shallow river, but its treacherous reaches of quicksand and soft mud had formed an impassable barrier protecting Morgoth's right flank. But then, one of those grey-cloaked meddlers known as Rangers had led a force of heavy cavalry across the secret ford ten kilometers upstream. The armored horsemen appeared at a crucial moment of the battle and fell upon the rear of Morgoth's army. The wargles trained in the tumbled rocks and mountains had one weakness. They feared horses and could never stand against a, sup a surprise cavalry attack. They broke, retreating to the narrow confines of Three Step Pass and back to the mountains of rain and night. Morgrath, his rebellion defeated, went with them. And here he had been in exile these fifteen years, waiting, plotting, hating the men who had done this to him. Now he thought it was time for his revenge. His spies told him the kingdom had grown slack and complacent, and his presence here was all but forgotten. The name Morgrath was a name of legends nowadays a name mothers used to hush unruly children, threatening that if they did not behave, the Black Lord Morgrath would come for them. The time was ripe once again. He would lead his wargles into an attack, but this time he would have allies. And this time he would sow the ground of uncertainty and confusion beforehand. This time none of those who conspired against him previously would be left alive to aid King Duncan for the Wogles were not the only ancient terrifying creatures he had found in these somber mountains. He had two other allies, even more fearsome, the dreadful beasts known as Kalakara. The time was ripe to unleash them. Hi guys, thanks for joining me for the prologue of book one of the Ranger's Apprentice series, The Ruins of Gorlin. Uh, it's the first video today, so please feel free to leave a like or a comment on what you enjoyed or what we can do better here. And join us next time for Chapter 1. Alright, thanks. Bye.